Welcome everybody. This is Coffee in the Library with Pastor Sivale and we have a special guest with us this time. This is Henry Chibutu. He is uh, a good friend. Can we still call you a good friend? No, no, no. We're still friends. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he's a good friend. He is running for political office, primarily uh, MP of the Kawata constituency. And so uh, we figured we can bring him in and talk a little bit of politics for, uh, for a change. Usually we stay, we stay clear, right? Yeah. Um, so welcome, everybody. Welcome, Pastor. Well, thank you, Matt. It's good to be here. And welcome to our special guest, Henry. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity to speak about a topic that's close to me. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. I think like 2021. Everyone is talking about August. Yes. <laughs> For yes. me, August is a family conference. <laughs> <laughs> for others, it's uh, it's when they are going to vote. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Vote, uh, vote for their 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 candidates and their government. Yes. Right. Yeah. So Henry, yeah, a Christian looking to get into politics. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I usually get that question. Yeah, yeah. Apart from that, the question is. Not only are you a Christian, but you have a degree, mm. you have a master's degree, mm. you have a good job, uh, you've got opportunities around you. Why politics? Yeah, that's yeah. bragging to us. But it's it out here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the reason is um, a conviction that has been burning in my heart for a long time. It's been trapped like fire in my bones. Like I've tried several times to suppress it in terms of how best can I help my community around me. Mm. And this uh, translated into forming an organization called Humanity Challenge Organization, uh, where that, even though I'm not in politic, active politics, I'm still uh, seen and still helping out the community and mm. sort out the many problems that our communities face. So our communities face several problems. And not all problems can be solved by the government. Mm -hmm. So issues to do with education, to do with mentorship, advocacy issues, mm -hmm. poverty, mm -hmm. yeah. But ultimately what I've noticed is that uh, if one goes into politics, the amount of influence that they have, the amount of things that they're able to change is huge. I'm inspired by people like William Wilberforce. He became a member of parliament at the age of about 23. Mm -hmm. His colleague William Pitt, who became prime minister at the age of 21, William Wilberforce himself was a believer. And if he didn't go into parliament, as we know it, if he, don't, he didn't go into active politics, the abolition of the slave trade wouldn't have happened. God used him as a vessel. And God, in the past, has always used human, humans. Mm -hmm. As weak as they may be, as frail as they may be, with all their shortcomings, he's used them to write the course of history. Mm -hmm. And because God has not showed us exactly what the future holds, he has called us to pray, not just pray, but to actually get involved and change our communities. Yeah, you, you've said that uh, not all problems can be solved by the government. That's true. We are, we are living in a time when people think government is a solution to everything. In fact, before yeah. we get to that, yeah. I think it would be good for you to help our viewers understand politics. Mm -hmm. So how would you define politics? Because oftentimes, is when someone says, I want to get into politics, there is this view out there which makes people to want to say, no, either don't go for it or go for it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you say there's this burning desire that has been with you, so help us understand what's politics, then we can, yeah. what's your simple definition yeah. so that someone yeah. out there yeah. can really understand. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Mm -hmm. uh, I think at the beginning of the uh, Coffee in the Library mm -hmm. sessions, there was one episode where there was Monsalini and uh, I've forgotten the other guy. Yes, Musunga. Yeah, Musunga. Musunga. Yeah. That yeah. was an apologetic. That was an apologetics, yeah. yeah. And and uh, I think it, it put it into perspective, mm -hmm. and I'll use the same mm -hmm. uh, thought pattern, that when God constituted the world, mm -hmm. there are pretty much three uh, departments, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. You have the church, mm -hmm. you have the state, mm -hmm. you have the family. Now, when you talk about politics, we're talking about the state. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in politics, you are having a situation where uh, God has given the opportunity to man to govern themselves mm -hmm. in trying to subdue the earth, in trying to make sure that the earth is productive, and we have laws mm -hmm. that govern a nation. 
So as a member of parliament, the primary role is to become the lawmaker. Okay, you go into parliament, you put down policies, you put down laws, and it's these laws or rules that provide a guideline mm -hmm. of how a society is supposed to be run. Mm -hmm. Now, if certain rules have been constituted and they're not in favor of the majority of the people, such that the business environment is not thriving, uh, people are unable to access quality education, mm -hmm. you know, people are unable to access quality healthcare facilities, then you have people who are in politics at the helm of it, trying to say, okay, how best then can we not just impact my family? Mm -hmm. Because if you decide not to do politics as it is, the people that you can impact is very little. Mm -hmm. So you impact your family, you impact your community at most. But if you go into politics, mm -hmm. you are given an opportunity to, compact, to impact more than your constituency, mm -hmm. you impact the nation at large. And therefore, this desire to say, how best can we shape the destiny of Zambia? Mm -hmm. Uh, for a long time, uh, my favorite subject in high school was geography. And my teacher used to say that Zambia has been endowed with great resources mm. such that Zambia can be the food basket for the southern region. Mm. And every time I would travel across the breadth and width of Zambia, I would see the untapped mm. potential that our country has. Mm. And having been privileged to travel outside, I've seen that Zambia has so much to offer. Given an opportunity to live abroad in Zambia mm -hmm. or stay in Zambia, mm -hmm. because we've got so much to offer the world. But these resources can only be uh, utilized at the optimum through politics. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the mining policies. Mm -hmm. How best can communities uh, benefit from those who are in the mining industry? Mm -hmm. It's a government. Uh, talking about taxes, talking about corporate social responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Many of these great laws which impact our societies are made by the politicians. Mm. Even the issues of worship. Mm. In Zambia today, we are privileged to have the liberty of uh, religion, liberty to worship. Mm. It's because of the politicians who drafted the constitution and said, as a country, we we'll allow uh, people to gather and worship. Mm. But if you don't have the right people in positions of influence, it's very soon that Zambia will degenerate and you have a situation where the freedom to assemble, the freedom to worship together, will no longer be there. Because it's, a, a, they call it a slow fed. Mm. As you have a very bad quality of leaders going into positions of influence, they determine the, the policies which are being made. And you have that mediocre running across mm. the whole frame, and it will affect the, the society as we know it, as we know Zambia. Yeah. You said this, this, this slow fade, yeah. uh, and it also ties into what you had said earlier about mm -hmm. what, what has driven you mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to go into politics. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the slow fade involves things that the government can and cannot do, yes. in that yeah. uh, we have faded into mm -hmm. the realm where the government is doing things that they should not do. Mm -hmm and not doing the things that they should do. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what, what exactly are the things that government cannot solve? What, what, what should our listeners uh, uh, um, think of in terms of, this is not something I should be looking to the government to solve, because it's only when we answer the negative that we can then answer the positive. positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so issues to do with, um, let's talk about, your, your your desire to to get employed or get a job, okay? Uh, we'll talk about the positives later. Let's talk about the negatives, mm -hmm. like you said. Uh, the government can only employ so many people, okay? And even the biggest employer right now in the country is the government. Example, it's the biggest employer, okay? Apart from people being employed, like self-employment, yeah. And uh, the aspirations of people wanting to get a job. Uh, God has given each one of us a gift, a talent, okay? And we should be able to pursue those talents and giftings to any living for ourselves if the government cannot provide a job. So we shouldn't be uh, castigating the government too much for not providing the jobs. Rather, we should see in ourselves how best can we provide the jobs. Because the government are not job creators. Because primarily, that's not their role, to create jobs. Mm -hmm. It's not primarily their role. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Secondly, uh, could be the issue to do with uh, oh I've well, got so many negatives can I can we go into the negatives <laughs> uh, please yeah. let's go into the negatives mm -hmm. uh, government should be providing 
enabling environment. Mm -hmm. For instance, this issue of uh, tax. Mm -hmm. We've got so much uh, taxes currently in the country. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, being employed myself, I know it feels when the government gets almost forty percent of your salary. Mm -hmm. Gets, man. Mm -hmm. Gets. Yeah. Okay. That money, if the tax bracket is lower, you're giving people more disposable income mm -hmm. to utilize at their homes and to invest in their businesses. But the government would say, "We need the money. Where will we get the money if?" Right. We don't tax. right. They should get the money from the businesses that the individuals are starting. Okay. So how then? <clears throat> because that's that's really the argument. So they need the money because mm -hmm. the government has what you call service delivery mm -hmm. departments. Like the, you have the police. Yes. Mm -hmm. You'll have the, the teachers. Mm -hmm. You'll have the doctors. You'll have mm -hmm. the army. Mm -hmm. So those are really, for lack of a better term, they're consuming the tax. In, the, the tax or the income from the government. Uh, and yet, there is, strictly speaking, there's nothing that they're giving back in terms mm -hmm. of bringing mm -hmm. money, mm -hmm. generating income. Mm -hmm. But they are needed. Mm -hmm. So they are, that's the, the government who said, so how, how are we going to feed these people if we don't tax? Mm -hmm. So they need the taxes. Mm -hmm. Then to look at yeah. other countries which are mm -hmm. managed, mm -hmm. Dubai. Mm -hmm. Dubai, in Dubai, the Dubai people are not taxed. Mm. The government doesn't get any money from your salary. Mm. Okay, you're allowed to go and spend your salary as you wish. Mm. It's because they've got uh, rich oil deposits. Mm. Okay, and they're making so much money from the other things that the, the sector is bringing in. Our government needs to concentrate on getting the monies from the manufacturing industry, mm -hmm. industrialization, in, industrializing the nation. So we're talking about issues of mining. How are we capturing that uh, benefits from the mines? How are we capturing benefits from the oil deposits in the country? We have oil. Uh, two weeks ago, I was in Japan. Do you know that we've got gold or something? Gold. There are 5,000 people right now camped, digging illegal gold mining. Why doesn't the government walk in and take all those, all those deposits? We've got so many resources that the government needs to utilize to put into the treasury and pay out. Yeah, I know yeah. this politics says you need to come in and uh, divide, uh, dissect a number of things. Mm -hmm. And I think this is also the question once I asked. Mm -hmm. Now, you've got those gold deposits mm -hmm. talking about in mm -hmm. Japan. So what should an individual do? If the government is not coming in, mm -hmm. what and am I supposed to do? Do I also go in, mm -hmm. start digging, mm -hmm. or do I inform the government <laughs> there's gold here? Yes. Can you do some? So, yes. Because so the role of the government yeah. is to create an enabling yeah. environment. Just to add to, to, add to uh -huh. the question so that we, 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 yeah. we, we expand it a little bit yeah. further. Um, private organizations, in theory, mm -hmm. would be able to be more profitable at mining than yes. the government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's um, true. And, and, and so, it, uh, strictly speaking, it is, is, is it not that the... Uh, what are the advantages to getting the government to move in where there are the gold deposits? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If we know that the government will be inefficient. Mm -hmm. So they're not right. moving in to extract the gold. Mm -hmm. They're moving in to provide the guidance for extracting the gold. Mm -hmm. To provide that enabling environment. Mm -hmm. I think the way America is today where it is because of uh, private sector participation, entrepreneurs mm -hmm. are the ones who've built America. There are so many people uh, in, in the states who are running small businesses, bookshops, a salon, they're running this and that, okay? And those people, the SMEs, who are then making the economy of the United States grow the way it is. Mm -hmm. So the government, we're not asking them to go the socialist route, mm -hmm. where they now come in and they're controlling all these things. No, we don't want them to do that. Mm -hmm. We want them to provide the enabling environment. Mm -hmm. How does that look like? Give us guidelines. Give us an opportunity to uh, register as cooperatives to go in and get the gold. Give us uh, seed capital mm. to go and purchase machinery to extract the gold and refine it. Give us market linkages abroad. Give us an opportunity to be able to trade with Europe for all these things. We shouldn't have a situation where the locals extract the gold, an Indian is waiting somewhere, as the case is right now, gets the gold, takes it to India, sells it, brings back the money, the locals get about 20% of that. So we, what we want, is the government to provide an enabling environment. And that's where the politician comes in. The politician comes in and says, okay, uh, we're not here to give you handouts. We're not here to give you our money because we don't have much money to give out. Anyway. But 
I'm going to create for you a fish pond. Go and buy the fingerlings. Put in the fish. Start fishing. I won't give you the fish. Start fishing. That's what the role of a politician and the government should do. But it seems to me, as you're speaking, that most of the, most of the problems you're mentioning mm-hmm. are government created. So, for example, the reason uh, a Zambian business would struggle to trade with the outside world is because of government regulations. Mm-hmm. The reason... Or the, um, or the lack of... Uh, yes, you, well, you could you could say the, the you could say the lack of. I'll, I'll, I'll mm-hmm. add one more. If mm-hmm. if if I want to get into into the mining uh, industry, if I want to bring in machinery, mm-hmm. just like if I want to bring in a car, mm-hmm. I pay for the price of the machinery, mm-hmm. and then Duty. when I'm bringing it in, I have to pay the same mm-hmm. pretty much the same yeah, amount, if not more, mm-hmm. to bring it in. Mm-hmm. And so, government has created the problems, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so now is it? Uh, it's 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 like going to the abusive husband. And asking him, mm-hmm. asking him for solutions mm-hmm. when he's mm-hmm. the oh, problem. how to stop abuse in marriages. Mm. <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. he's, he's the so how, how do you square that circle? Yes, yes. that uh-huh. yeah, yeah. And yeah, going to the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and this is where this court comes in. They say that uh, diapers like politicians or politicians like diapers must be changed often and for the same reason. Okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you have government. Who makes up the government? The politicians make up the government, mm-hmm. right? So, if you find uh, that the government is not sorting out your problems, you have an opportunity. Thank God, in this democratic dispensation, we have the opportunity to change our leaders. And the, when the Bible was written, there was no opportunity like that. Okay, you had to really just be quiet, submit, pray, pray that all goes well. But we have an opportunity to aspire for leadership, to get into these positions of influence and change the narrative. Uh, look, when, and when a corporate company comes in from abroad, you know that they pay too little or no tax. Mm. This is information to everyone knows. Mm. Then for a small business, that which I run, I have to pay so many taxes, I have to go through so many offices to get the kind of benefits that these guys are getting. Machinery and vehicles. You know that for an NGO, they are able to bring in machinery and vehicles duty-free. Yeah. Duty-free. Mm. And some go masquerading under the name of an organization and yet extracting so much profit from the country. And yet you want, as a Zambian, for you to get that waiver, even for two years, three years, to set up a business, don't give it to you. In entrepreneurship, they say that it takes to three to five years for any small business to thrive. Mm-hmm. Between one and three years, most businesses will die. Mm-hmm. 80% of the businesses that start one, three years will die. Okay? Those which survive after three years, to be successful. And our people who come from abroad, they get those incentives. But the locals don't get those incentives. Let's talk about construction industry. Do you know that there's a cap in the construction industry, for example, making roads? Local contractors can only get up to 20% of the contracting jobs in the country. No, that's wrong. When raise it up, let the locals get as much as possible in getting the roads uh, done. Now, so... Uh, you are articulating things very well. So, uh, so the question narrows down to you. Mm-hmm. You are aspiring to be to get into office, mm-hmm. MP, and the Lord willing, the highest position mm-hmm. that the Lord can can lead you to. And so, all these things you are raising. Mm-hmm. How do you hope to to solve them and change them? What difference are you going to make? Because you are telling us government is government, that, mm-hmm. and then when you get to government, who be the government? <laughs> you get the point. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So how do you hope uh, to make a difference? And to add to yeah. add to that, there's uh, another yeah. uh, another saying, mm-hmm. uh, if you will. Um, the results of elections mm. are always the same mm. because the government remains in power. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's always the government. Always You're not the kicking government. out the government. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and part of that includes the fact that we have civil servants yeah. who are the actual machinery the of the government, mm. and these are fixtures. Mm. They remain. Mm-hmm. New yeah. politicians, politicians come and go, but the civil service mm. uh, remains. remains. Mm-hmm. And so, if the rot is at civil service level. Mm. Or maybe we could say the rot is all the way yeah. all the way down. It's not mm-hmm. just civil servants, mm-hmm. but even the even the, the politicians itself. 
um, you could come in with all these bright ideas. Then you get into office and you mm-hmm. find that the machinery mm-hmm. is actively rejecting you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. True. Yes. True. So how do you? How do? How does one win mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. in 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 such a situation? Yeah, yeah. So they say that everything stands or falls on leadership. Mm-hmm. Everything falls or stands on leadership. Mm-hmm. The reason why we are hopeful about tomorrow, the reason why we we'll wake up tomorrow, okay, let's assume tomorrow is Monday, and go for work. Mm-hmm. Is because we have this uh, conviction that we will change something in the organization we are working. We will somehow touch one life where we are working. Okay? The reason why young men uh, today on a Saturday are standing somewhere uh, and the lady is doing her makeup right now and getting to church to get married is because she's got hope in the institution of marriage. Even though she's heard that, even though you go in to still be married. Because there are so many uh, words and uh, sayings about how marriage right now is not really happening, you know. They're telling young people, don't go into marriage. Yeah? But she's still going in there because she's got a conviction that if the Lord has ordained this, the Lord will make it beautiful. If the Lord has ordained government, the Lord will make it beautiful. And we've got countries who have set an example for us. Okay? We've got countries who in the last 30 years have developed into, out of uh, the low income bracket, into the mid income bracket. Tanzania is an example. Uh, so, may so rest in peace, Magufuri, who died. Okay? Everyone now is not praising him. Others were not praising him when he was president. Mm-hmm. But they are saying that this man, within a period of five years, ten years, has managed to move Tanzania from a low uh, bracket mm-hmm. to the mid income bracket. Mm-hmm. And the citizens are testifying that the dynamics in our country have really changed. Okay, America, a country built on biblical principles, and they said, "Okay, we want to build a nation that mirrors mirrors God in terms of everything, the world view, and everything." And they are where they are today, and we admire that country what it is, even though now things are going south. But they are where they are today because there is hope in their leaders. Yeah, and uh, something for me was going to Parliament. Who has passed going to burn. I'm saying that as long as the sun is shining tomorrow, we have an opportunity to change the narrative. We have an opportunity to change the system. Mm. I've been a civil servant myself, and I'll tell you that the road is not all the way down. There are some civil servants who do exceptionally well. They put in their best, sweat and blood and everything. Even with the little resources that come from government, they go out in the field and they're meeting communities and changing things around them, yeah? So, everything falls and stands on leadership. Maybe what Zambia has been waiting for is a right leader, or not just one right leader, right leaders. People who are qualified, people who say, I feel the needs of my community, and I want to change my community. And they get into this position and do something about it. And maybe Zambians are saying, okay, Last time we chose a candidate or candidates in our constituencies because the song was nice. But now we're thinking about his manifesto. What is he saying? We're thinking about his vision. What's his plans for our constituency, for our world? And we're going to vote for them. And based on that, we're going to change things. When you have a job interview, you have several candidates seated behind them. And the person who was there previously messed up the institution. As an institution, you won't say, Ah, we've had two guys who've messed up the institution. Why should we interview again? Instead, you pass out the adverts. People will come, you interview. And there'll be this one candidate who will bring a semblance of hope. A candidate who's going to say, I want to change the face of this organization. And you're going to give them a chance and believe mm-hmm. best that they'll change. Yeah. Um, powerful stuff. Mm-hmm. You, are, you, are, you, are, you are feeling me with a bit of... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, a bit, a bit of enthusiasm, mm. uh, but I'd like to take it mm. to the um, sort of to the campaign realm, mm-hmm. uh, if you will. Um, sort of no offense to to the to the man himself, yes. but there's a way in which religious mm-hmm. individuals get into the political realm and either think they will mm. win because they're a religious option, mm-hmm. or they're in just to make a statement, mm-hmm. uh, just mm-hmm. to show that they are a good option. Yes. Mm. Um, however, the way they go about their campaigns. Mm. Almost everybody looks at them saying, this guy either knows he's not winning or doesn't want to win. Mm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
Um, I would say you are a little bit different. Mm. Yeah, and, mm. and and this is where I I, I would I would like to mm. in, engage mm. you on this mm. in that mm. um, you've been a dark horse for quite a while. Mm. You've been trying to run for MP for quite mm. a while. This is not your it's not your first your first uh, your first time attempting to do so. Mm. Um, and you have not necessarily seen money as the mm. uh, limitation. Mm. You've tried to uh, you've tried to work with what you with, with, with mm. what you have. Mm-hmm. Um, so two questions. Firstly, do you genuinely think you can win against mm-hmm. the money that is backing all the other candidates? All these guys they are being funded mm. by all sorts of special interests, yeah. corruption, you name it, they are funded. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you honestly think that 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 you can win. Mm-hmm. That's number one. And number two, what, what are your thoughts on what I would call loser candidates? Mm. Where we go in mm-hmm. hoping that our religious, the people will see a Christian man yeah. and yeah. vote for him. Mm-hmm. But no, in, no intention almost mm. to win. Mm. No hunger to win. You know, mm. you can tell when right, a, right. you yeah. can tell when a guy is hungry. There are, mm. there are two guys who are applying for a job. Mm. One of them is every he's applying. 20, mm. 20 applications mm. a day are going out. Mm. He's making all the phone calls. Mm. He's going for the interviews. He's going even when there's no interview. There's there's one guy who's hungry, and there's another guy who's saying, "I'm applying." Mm-hmm. And he applies. You know, one or for two. The circle. Yeah, and he's praying, God, please let the application. You know, both mm. both of them are mm. applying, but one of them is hungry, mm. and the other one. Isn't so. Um, what are your ta- what's your take on the on, on mm-hmm. sort of uh, religious loser mm-hmm. politicians, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and what what makes you think you can win? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice question. Nice question. Yeah, uh, I've been very disappointed. Uh, you see, when you're inside the system, you get to see everything. Okay, and when I'm in politics, I get to see everything. And how that we've been having a primary elections, okay, at ward, constituency level, everything. And it's amazing how much a 50 kwacha can do to change the mind of an individual. Okay? They give them a hundred kwacha, they're going to vote for you. They don't care about your manifesto, they don't care anything about that. But give them that, and you'll be surprised they're going to rally behind you. Okay? So that has really disappointed me. And speaking as a young person, as a young person who's coming on, on the table, you don't have so much finances, yeah. you don't have so much resources to splash around, okay, and win an election. Uh, but I have, I've got this conviction that we've seen people in the past who've moved in with almost nothing, okay, mm-hmm. in terms of the money that's splashing around and bribes, and I've been able to win an election. Mm-hmm. I'm reminded of the people like um, Mr. Ernest Mansa, okay, from Osaka Baptist. I had a conversation with him, <coughs> and he made it known to me that when he was vying for his position, he didn't spend anything. The community welcomed him and campaigned for him. They fed him actually during the campaign trail, and he managed to win that position. I'm reminded of people like Sata himself, like President Sata. When he was campaigning, I remember passing through the town center, and I could count his posters. There were like five or so, okay? But for Arab they were everywhere, littered across the country. We had banners flying high. You had everything for our yes, people, yeah. But that had nothing, yeah. And the man won an election, and it's because God is sovereign. I'm coming in on the table and saying, if God has ordained it, if God has planned it, and if God has willed it, our role as human beings, our human responsibility, is to do everything as if it all depended on us. There are some candidates who are coming in and saying, ah, for the circle, <laughs> let me just try for the circle. Let me, let me just try. And one verse which has really been very uh, impactful on me uh, since like five years ago is, is, is in James chapter 1, where it says that, Does any one of you lack wisdom? Let him ask. And God will give it. But when God gives it to you, you should not be a, like a double minded man, like a wave tossed here and there. And God says that such a man will not receive anything from me. That really rebuked me a lot. For those of you who are wondering, it's James chapter 1. Verse 5 through to verse 8. That's really where Henry is quoting. That's a verse Henry is quoting mm-hmm. those three verses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And he says that such a man will not receive anything from you. Don't be double minded. Okay? People who go in and say, You have been unstable. 
So, and uh, we, we had a conference recently with uh, Mark Chask, mm. Money Dominion. Mm -hmm. So I was listening to it, and he was talking about the problem that men face is the inability to make decisions. Mm. And when they make decisions, they're unable to follow through their decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that has really been rebuking me. And away from that is uh, there's a book I've been reading called I think in big, I think it's written by a Christian author because it comes in with a lot of Christian backup, and he says that uh, there's always an excuse at every stage of life. So for the person who is thinking of starting a business, they are saying I'll start in five years time when I get more stable in my employment, when I get more money. For the person who wants to go into athletics, they are saying now nah, I'll go to the gym. Uh, two weeks from now, there's always an excuse, okay. And from all these, um, the, all this information I've gathered is that when you go in, go in as if everything depends on you, but pray as if everything depends on God. So you go in and say, okay, on one hand, if God wills me to be adopted as a candidate and be a member of parliament, God will make it happen. Then you put it on your side. Mm. Then you say, now everything depends on. I must campaign, I must do everything mm. as if for me to win this election, it depends on me. Mm. I remember as we were doing the primary elections, I had an option to just sit home and just wait for the results to trip in. I said, no, I must make sure that I've got observers at every word, mm. drop them across the, the world, mm. make sure that I should be getting the, the messages coming in, knowing exactly how I'm trailing, how I'm doing with the points. Mm. So you must do everything. As if everything depends on you. So there are people who come in and say, no, God is sovereign. Mm. And they just leave it like that. No. You must go in, take the bull. Because mm. yeah. well, God who is sovereign has also given us the means. Yeah. Um, I, I think one of the, some of the things you've really sort of highlighted them and brought them out. I, think, I still think you need to mm -hmm. let the viewers know. Okay. What difference do you hope to make, make. as any you want to? A Christian who believes in God's sovereignty and human responsibility, tied what Mansa was saying is that there's this view out there mm -hmm. that when we see you in politics, mm -hmm. we are basically saying, oh, the, guy, the chap is in there for money. Mm -hmm. He probably wants you to be given one of these big vehicles of MPs and mm -hmm. all those things. Mm -hmm. And so even when people are sitting, listening to you, you know, they've got this at the back of their minds. It's just one of them. Just like any other politician we know. But for you as Henry, tell her, tell the viewers mm -hmm. what you've articulated a number of things very well and what difference do you hope to make. And then also, you in, a, in, in answering that, you tie it to the fact that as a Christian, what, what impact has that had on your life? But you are even in, even in your decision making mm. as, as a Christian going in politics, you've had Christians in politics who've messed themselves mm. and they've ruined their testimony such that whenever someone says I'm a Christian, people don't take you serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, and just to amplify mm -hmm. on that, mm -hmm. um, so I get different responses from people yeah. about uh, my, my, my desire and passion to go into mm -hmm. politics, to set in politics. And uh, a number of them feel that uh, I've backslid them. And they're like, ah, I'm a politician, you're backslid I remember doing politics as far back as at Unza, you know, when I was at the University of Zambia. And this particular time, there was no water at the institution. And uh, I remember rallying a crowd of students and said, guys, we're going to demonstrate. Peacefully, of mm -hmm. course. We're not throwing stones. We're mm -hmm. going to demonstrate peacefully to management. This has been going on for three weeks. We've got no water here. And I remember sitting behind, sitting on a platform and chanting, you know, let's go, let's go, let's mm. make sure we get the water. water. Yeah. And uh, at that point, I was the chairman mm. for Zafes. Mm. Okay. <laughs> 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 and I had members of Zafes walking past mm. the crowd. Yeah. They're like, Henry. <laughs> mm. Yeah. The chairman is demonstrating. Yeah. 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 So at that point, so some people, uh, will become resentful. And even now, as, as you watch uh, some videos where out there campaigning or doing all these things, uh, it, it's, it's pretty hard to see a Christian do those things. Uh, and it's not sinful. Mm. I mean, you're talking to a public, you're talking in, in Nyanja, 
and you are, you know, doing yeah, the not insulting. You're not insulting yeah. anyone. You're bringing out the issues. Mm. And people feel like, ah, this guy. But God has commanded us to subdue the earth. And our vocations are holy vocations. Mm. If you're a cleaner, do it unto God. Okay? If you're a cook, do it unto God. It's your vocation. If I'm a politician, I'll do it unto God as a politician, right? Let me contextualize it for Kabwata constituency. What do I want to do? What impact will I bring about? I've been raised in Kabwata constituency for most, most part of my life, okay? And uh, God, through the experiences I've gone through, I know what it feels like to have nothing. I know what it feels like to go into school and be chased out of school because we don't have tuition fees, we don't have school fees. I know what it feels like to go to school and your, your shoe is dirty. Mm-hmm. I know what it feels mm-hmm. like to be an unemployed uh, citizen. I know how it feels like not to have enough. Employed, educated youth. An educated youth from the <laughs> university of Zambia. I know how it feels like to get on a bus and you don't have enough money to get back from town. I know how it feels to get back home and you don't have enough money to pay for your rentals or to buy food. I know how the, all that feels like, you know. But also, I know how it feels like to have money. I know how it feels like to be well traveled. I know how it feels like to associate with the elite in the society. So God has given me both. And so I'm not going into politics and saying I need a VX. No, because I know there's more beyond life than that. I remember I was offered a job somewhere and someone was offering me the job was saying, do you even be driving? I was like, come on. <laughs> it's not already, like you're offering yeah, you. I already drive. Yeah. Yeah. Not, I, drive. <laughs> I already drive. That's not like uh, the deal breaker mm-hmm. for me, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I'm not going in because mm-hmm. of the perceived benefits I'm, I'm, I might get. Mm. But for Kabwata constituency, I'm thinking, the youths I grew up with, who are now at Kabwata market right now, as we speak, mm. drinking junta, and getting mm. drunk by 10 hours, what do I want to do for them? I want to ensure that we develop skill centers for them, rehabilitation centers for them, mentorship programs for them. I'm thinking of the marketeers who are selling in Katunga, it's Lenje market and who have been in those businesses for 10, 15 years without any growth. I want to provide them with startup capital, loans for them to access and grow their businesses, uh, provide to them facilities to learn how best to run businesses that grow. Why should they be at the same level 15 years later? It's because they do not know better. They don't know that with the resources that they're able to make, they can grow from where they are to another level. I'm thinking about pensioners retirees in Kabwata constituency who have not been well represented by the current area member of parliament who was won't go into details mm-hmm. but their concerns haven't been haven't been met i mean it's 20 years later they haven't been paid their benefits and uh, i'm saying as i come in as a member of parliament one of my first priorities is to make sure that we give you what's due to you your benefits your 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 your, your, your monies okay I'm thinking of uh, young people who run barber shops, young people who run car washes, and I'm saying we need to grow a business to the next level. Let's provide you the necessary connections, the market leakages, the funding that you need for communities. Let's, let's do that. I'm thinking of people in Kamanga right now. In Kamanga, there is a dire water situation. Sanitation is an issue, and the roads are not there. Kabata constituency is some, like where you live, the roads, but you go down to Kamanga, it's a sorry site. I'm saying we need to provide you with water. We need to drill you more bottles. We need to provide you with proper health facilities. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, three weeks ago, died at Chilenja Clinic because there was no oxygen. We need proper health facilities. That's a level one hospital. Why shouldn't we have basic facilities like oxygen coming right on time for the person to have that uh, health care? On, on, yeah. on, on the same, there's... there's there's clearly a lot that you are looking to do when mm-hmm. you get in. Mm-hmm. Um, I had heard of a scenario, mm-hmm. uh, not sure the accuracy, the reality of it, but I suspect it to be true. Um, an individual seeks political office to do a lot of change, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, create a lot of change in the environment, gets into office and he realizes there's no money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's no money. Mm-hmm. Mm. The previous owner of the office leveraged mm. the future for mm. the past, basically, which is what debt is. Mm. You said you you leverage the future. Yeah. Yeah. You say my future income, I'm I'm getting, I'm using it yeah. all now. Mm. 
So like now you come in mm. and there's no money. <laughs> mm. uh, at that point, um, what, what, do? what do you do? Yeah. You've got all these bright ideas. Yeah. Yeah. You promised the world. Mm. And your constituents it's are looking at you world. expecting the yeah. big change. Yes. So what, 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 does, yeah. what does one do in, right. in such a situation? Yeah. Oh, even an example use of pensioners. Mm-hmm. They've worked, and then where would you get the money if they're working, let's say, for, 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 for Total? Mm-hmm. It's Total's responsibility to pay them, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If they're working for the government. So, mm-hmm. where does one get the money? Mm-hmm. Where, uh, of course, there's a reason why they're not paying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, man, the money has been leveraged. Yeah, yeah. It's been used for something yeah. else that was either a failure of an investment yeah. or there's just mm-hmm. no money. Mm-hmm. So what does what does Henry Chibu to do in such a situation? Yes, and the viewers who are watching right now uh, are, are now saying that, look, that's not your role as an MP. The people are saying that right now. Mm. They're saying as they're watching this, they're saying your role is to make laws, mm. not to bring about this development you're mm. talking about. And as you'll be watching some of my videos, if you attend my campaigns, one of the things you hear is that uh, I'm talking about all these developmental programs mm-hmm. I want to bring to Kabwata constituency, and they'll be saying, Henry is lying to them. Now, let me put this in context, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, the role of an MP, Member of Parliament, in, a, in an African context, especially in Zambia, has evolved. It's, in fact, uh, the scope has widened. Away from making laws, you're expected as a Member of Parliament, not by law, Expected by your voters to develop their constituency. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's like a job. You've applied for a job, and maybe your job is the IT specialist. Okay, and on that particular day, they require you to make some tea for the people. It's not your your job description, but the expect you to do it. Yeah. They are overwhelmed. Yeah, okay, yeah. so you will go out and make tea for mm-hmm. them. It's not that you be paid more. It's not that you're not doing your job. Your, your, your scope has increased. Mm. So even in me, for as a member of parliament, my scope has increased because I'm living in a developing country mm-hmm. as a member of parliament. So when I'm saying these things, I'm not lying. I'm saying what I intend to do. Mm-hmm. And some of these things I've done in my capacity as executive director for Humanity Challenge Organization. Mm. We provided mentorship. We provided education opportunities. We provided employment opportunities. We provided scholarships even. We've done these things, mm-hmm. okay? You've seen these things, you've done these things, okay? And coming in now to develop, to develop our constituencies when there's no money mm-hmm. is this. A member of parliament must be enterprising. Mm-hmm. A member of parliament needs to think outside the box mm-hmm. and find, find ways of generating. Mm-hmm. One of the projects I've suggested to my constituency is the developing of, uh, of a farm. Okay, uh, an agricultural production center in Kabwata constituency mm. down in Shantung, where we've got land there. Mm. I'm saying we're going to cut out about 10 hectares, mm. which we're going to use as a productive center for the constituency. Our youth will be employed there. Okay, mm. those who are loitering on the streets drinking to Jiri Jiri will take them there. And we're going to produce so many things from there. You're talking about vegetables, you're talking about animal production, everything. And we're going to be selling within the community and beyond. You're generating income. Mm. And that, that income we're using to help out the different needs in the community. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about businesses. Earlier on, I said that we'll be providing loans and seed capital to entrepreneurs and people. A loan is not free. Mm-hmm. The current situation right now is that people are calling it empowerment funds, but really they are free. It's up to you to pay them back or not. It's up to you. We won't follow you. But us, what we're saying is that when we come in, we're giving you this seed capital, and you're paying us back 15% interest on it. Mm-hmm. That's money you're generating from the community and you're making it a revolving fund. Mm-hmm. Other than that, it's money you've got to invest in other things. Apart from that, we're saying that we're increasing the stake of locals in Kabwata constituency in doing jobs contracts for the government. We're saying, away from you getting 20% stake, we want you to get even 50% of the jobs currently happening in Kabwata constituency. You know what's, that happen- what, what's happening? Is that you've, in, you've increased disposable income already. Mm-hmm. The number of families that will benefit from that are a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Apart from that, we are saying that there are so many grant opportunities that uh, the non government organizations are providing. There are so many scholarship opportunities that uh, out, uh, different countries are providing. 
and what I've noticed is that there's there's a there's there's a disconnect between uh, these players who have got so many opportunities and the poor. I think the reason why people remain poor, among the many other reasons, is because of this access to information of opportunities that they could potentially potentially have. Mm. And coming in as a member of parliament, we are providing this linkage and saying, look, you can get a grant there. Look, your child can go to the States. There's an opportunity for school. You know? We're saying, look, this organization is looking for 10 drivers. And if you go and go Zambia Jobs, there are many of them. But the people in Kabwata constituency don't know, don't about, know them. about them. Because why? They don't have a smartphone. They've got no money to buy a newspaper and read these adverts. Very to access to the internet. Yeah, and people who end up benefiting are the middle class and the high people. The, what, what, what you're speaking of has uh, reminded me of uh, John Cecil Rhodes. Mm. Um, when the way he made his fortune yeah. in, in, in South Africa mm. is people would, have, would be mining in Kimberley. Mm. Um, so a person who owned the farm or the area that had that had the, 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 the minerals, because they had no money to mine and mm. to set up a, an entire mining operation, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, they would basically subdivide the entire area because they know that there's minerals here. Mm. So they would mm. subdivide them and mm. they would give maybe like a three by three, three by five, five mm. by five plot of, of land. And then you get a guy who's a prospector who's going to come and you say, this is your area, mine. Mm. From what you mine, I get a percentage. Mm. I get fifteen percent, twenty percent, whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the rest is yours mm. to uh, to deal with, mm. and that's how the, the uh, an entire mining establishment developed. Mm. Because I don't have the money, but if but you I get have a the few land guys, with mm, mm, yes, mm, you get, a, you get a, some guys. And so when you're talking about the uh, the farming opportunities. Uh, that that uh, that that are there, you know, it's a similar mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. idea. Can can work out just a simple subdivision. Mm-hmm. You you do your farming there, and mm-hmm. then you're paying back based on the the, 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 the profits mm-hmm. that you're getting. And Cecil Rhodes, which brings me to Cecil Rhodes, mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. he did, he mm-hmm. realized that mm-hmm. there's an opportunity here. Mm-hmm. So he hired a guy to to mine on his yeah. uh, on his behalf. Paid him from the profits. <laughs> he saved up a bit and mm-hmm. he bought the plot next to him. And then he bought the plot next, and then he, and that's how he, like that. that's and that's before you knew it, he was the guy who was running that. the thing, and yeah, he put excellent biography, blatant racist, but Cecil Rhodes was a brilliant, yeah, uh, was, 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 a, was a brilliant man. So um, there's a there's there's a there's a lot that's there that uh, I'm hearing a lot that I that mm. I like. Mm. I was I think I was a bit pessimistic going mm. in, but <laughs> you've uh, you proven yourself a little bit. Yeah. I wanted to ask you. <laughs> Uh, in, as we sort of wrap things uh, wrap things up, mm-hmm. you had mentioned that politicians are like dirty diapers. Mm. Like dirty diapers mm. should be changed often, mm. and for the same reason. Mm. A lot of people talk about this when they are getting in, mm. and then they get in and they realize they the, become the diaper. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like the the, the 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 work is sweet, uh, but but all, I would I would even say for those who have. A, a, a good vision for the for what they're trying to do. The work is never done. It's never done. Mm. So you're, you're building this place up and it's making progress. And then you realize, if I leave now, mm. how will they reach my vision? Ah. Reach my vision, yes. reach my plan. And ah. so even, it's not, just, it's not just corrupt politicians who say. Mm-hmm. It's also those who are like, I've got a grand vision. Mm. Vision 2060. <laughs> mm. And then you've done your, your, your two terms of office. At that point, do do you just leave then? You know, you know what I mean. So, what makes you so sure that after your time is over, mm. you will be able to move on? Mm. And if you will move on, move on to what? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm reminded of a uh, uh, general, uh, Godfrey Mianda. I had a conversation with him, and uh, I was asking him about his his stint in Kabwata constituency because he was a member of parliament here. Uh, before he became vice president of the country. And he told me that there's so much he wanted to do for the constituency, but when he got there, he realized that he can't do everything. And he felt a bit frustrated that he didn't do everything he had planned to do. Okay, And uh, for me, it's what they also call the founder syndrome. There's always a need to go on and on and on 
are bringing about change. Okay, and uh, if you see you haven't done as much mm -hmm. as you want to do, you ask for another term. Mm -hmm. uh, we see this in Russia. <laughs> uh, Putin is already constituting laws mm -hmm. which have allowed him to extend his rule. Mm -hmm. yeah. Museveni is going on because he's got a grand vision, vision 2016. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kagame. yeah, Kagame. Yeah, mm -hmm. people respect him a lot. He's still going on and on. He still feels he's got so much to deliver. I think it stems from a misunderstanding of what success is. Mm -hmm. People define success differently. For some, success is when they've served 60 years in government and done all these things. But the way God views success is different. Mm -hmm. So I've asked myself questions many times, especially for Christians who've been in politics. And I've asked them, I've asked myself, that, do they think they've been successful in their plot, mm -hmm. in their bid? And when I turn to God's mind, I think God would tell me that they've been successful. They might not have brought about this so much great change and lived 20 years, 30 years in parliament mm -hmm. and, you know, changed the economy, GDP and all those things. But in their own way, according to God's standards, they have scored success. There are names in the Bible which uh, only have a line against the names. Mm -hmm. And we've got names in the Bible who have chapters against the names. Both in God's eyes successful. Mm -hmm. They played the role that God bent them to play. For me, going in, it's with a thought and saying, okay, what has God uh, destined me to do? Okay, maybe God's destiny for me was to inspire more young people to get into politics, to inspire more Christians to get into active public service. Maybe that's what God's plan was. And if that has been done, that's success. That's 10 out of 10. You've achieved God's plan. Okay? If God's plan for me was uh, to serve Kawata constituency for two terms and we've managed to do what we can do there, it's time when God has called us to do other things, to move out and leave other people to come in. This is where mentorship comes in. Uh, I think that one of the problems we suffer is the issue of mentorship. We feel that we are the best and there's no one else. The truth of the matter is that we're not the best. There are people who are more educated. There are people who are better qualified to serve in the positions that we're in, okay? And it's our role as leaders, wherever we are, to mentor people to take over from us and concentrate on family, concentrate on other gifts that God has given me. Um, where I was, I was living, uh, I want to tell you the location, you may know the people. Uh, there, was, there was an old man. He wasn't really old, I think he was 70. But he would spend his time on the days uh, when the day started, you just come out of the house, he sunbasks the whole day, takes a walk, gets back in the house. And I felt bad. I said, no, there should be more to life. Even at 70, mm -hmm. there should be more to life. There should be something more you are doing rather than just sitting mm -hmm. and watching the sun and going back in the house. And uh, that therefore shows us that beyond politics, politics should not be an end in itself. Our careers should not be an end in themselves. That's why we see people when their career is done, when they've resigned or when their time is done, they've uh, retired, they, they, they live almost miserable lives and fulfilling lives. It's because all their lives were invested in this one thing, their career. Our career should be a means to an end. And our end should be to glorify God. Meaning that when we finish our lifetime of our careers, what has God prepared for us? Maybe it's mentoring young people. Okay, maybe it's now passing the torch to other people. Maybe starting an organization, a foundation, that will see more people coming to the stage and taking up some of these uh, positions. All right, now, well articulated and uh, given us, I think, or hopefully our viewers, some insight into Henry Chibutu's uh, political aspirations and plans. Mm. And, I mean, uh, if you want to get hold of him, just let us know. We will link you uh, with him, and then you can spend more time uh, with him and ask the questions. Or if you have any questions, please, you can still send them through, and we will pass them on to him and probably <laughs> bring him o o on another episode. Yeah. And this is just the first of the series on Coffee in the Library, not just with Henry, yeah. but we'll bring many others that we know are Christians and they are into politics. 
this you think we are trying to to promote a particular political party <laughs> but henry was the one that was available today and hopefully the lord willing more can come through next time and the form answer wraps up and i think for the viewers hopefully you are interested in the running of the nation the affairs of the nation you are uh, praying for your leaders but also reading their party manifestos mm. so that you get to understand what they've written and gives you and give you an insight into uh, uh, the political parties and also when you go to vote in August that at least you'll be voting from an informed mind. Then, yeah, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Before we wrap it up, Pastor, how does it feel? not being the center of attention in the coffee in the library episode. <laughs> well, I think uh, there's something you said. <laughs> <laughs> That's what <laughs> just makes you say, okay. He said, first of all, you must know we're not the, we're not the best. <laughs> That's one. Then two, uh, we must mentor others. <laughs> <laughs> so now you know where you're at. After your yeah. yeah. old dopes, you come and take Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he, he should now come and tell us after <laughs> politics by mentoring what is learned and all those things. So I think for me, my mind was ready that no, I'm not the center of attraction, mm. though I'm in the center. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's courage to help people understand yeah. a bit of politics. And then also from Henry, because a number of people know him from the Wala boys, Unza, Kawata. And so some of them will know that okay what he's saying we've seen him do or maybe we're doubting this we need to hear him more mm. but also they can get to they can get to meet him because yeah. it's not yeah. like up there in yeah. some yeah. hidden yeah. castle yeah. or Swara. they know where he stays yeah. they know what car he drives yeah. <laughs> where he's from so yeah. people can link up with him and say no mr chibot you said this you say that what did you mean yeah. and uh, uh can can chat more yeah yeah yeah, well, thank you very much for joining us. It has been great uh, having Henry but join us. Uh, he didn't drink his coffee. But I did, I did. I your, did. You guys, your coffee. First <laughs> first I was disappointed. I was shocked yeah. that you have real coffee. I thought it was water in the mind. Thought we were liars. Yeah, yeah. Then, wow. then discovered that uh, no sugar. We're well, sugar free. But you have so much coke. That's why we are sugar. That's why we are sugar. <laughs> <laughs> we have control on this one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, didn't, I didn't enjoy it. I, I just, well, just drank it. <laughs> well, you'll be amped for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, thank you very much for joining us. It has been great. Um, if you have joined us for the very first time, we have other episodes that we have done discussing a wide variety of issues. If you have things that you'd like us to talk about, you can just you know, write it in the comment section down below if it's on YouTube. Or reach out to us through our different social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube. It's all in the description below. Even Instagram now, would yeah. you believe? Mm. Yeah. Mm. And uh, Henry, as mm. well, can be found on uh, his Facebook page mm -hmm. primarily. Yeah, you have Facebook, a Twitter account. Twitter, yeah. Instagram. And Instagram. Yeah, since, the, since the youths are there. So. Yes, that's where, that's, where you're, that's where you're going. So yeah, yeah. make sure you check that out. Um, he's an interesting guy to follow. And mm. this has been Coffee in the library. We shall see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.